Today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own face shield in very, very little time using some of our very fast setting materials. And today we're going to show you how you can make uh, your own visor frames. Now we're going to go from a 3D printed model of a frame, which I'm going to give you the uh, files for in the description, to a fast setting silicone mold made out of the Mold Star 16 Fast, which is gonna set in 30 minutes, to a casting that's made out of Smooth Cast 65D. Now it's really important to use the right casting resin for this project. This frame here is very thin and somewhat brittle, but choosing the right material that's semi-rigid and flexible like this can make or break the project. Now let's just jump into this and see how we make dozens and dozens of these frames in a very short time. So, and here you can find uh, the uh, file for the 3D print that we used online. This is a free file. You can simply download it and print it. You can see here our printer is going wild trying to get this cranked out today. And once we have the model, we're just going to study it to uh, understand how we're going to actually mold it. So there is some detail here that we do want to capture and we want to understand the mold layout. And for this, we're going to be using a single-sided, uh, uh, one-sided uh, block mold. And for that, we're going to embed our model into the clay, the Sculptix soft clay. And then we're going to cut an aluminum shim that's about an inch wide. That's going to go around as our mold box. So we're going to manipulate this. You can see it's nice and soft. Then we're going to make it hug our model. We're keeping about three quarters of an inch profile around the model. Now the material that we're gonna use for the mold itself, this is Moldstar 16 Fast. As the name itself says, this is a fast setting product. So that's the key of our project here. And as you can see, the uh, working time, the pot life is about five minutes while a cure is set in 30 minutes. So we have to work uh, very fast to mix this and get it inside of our mold box. But before we start mixing the material, it's really important to follow the instructions and the instructions call for pre-mixing off the A and B separately before dispensing. And since this material is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, we can simply set up our dispensing cups and then pour it to equal amounts. Once we have the material dispensed, a clean mixing container is used to combine the two components together. And as you will hear me say many, many times, you wanna scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your mixing container when you're mixing two components together in order to get a really good mix between them two. You shouldn't see any streaking in your material. Now, even though this is a fast setting material, I do like to double mix the product just to avoid any kind of inhibition issues and unmixed material ending up in my mold. So we're gonna transfer the material once it's mixed into a secondary clean mixing container and repeat that procedure. Again, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom off your mixing container. Now that the product is ready to pour, we can simply pour into our mold box. This is um, poured into one single spot and then the material is allowed to find its level. So just pour in one spot and let the material level out. This is now allowed a full cure for 30 minutes. Now, after the 30 minute cure, we can demold our uh, silicone that we poured. I'm gonna be careful here not to disturb the model or the mold box itself. So we're gonna leave that intact and simply peel out our mold. As you can see, it's not too thick, but we captured all the detail that we need from our project and this mold is ready for production. But before we go there, I'm going to put back that aluminum flashing around our model and get this ready to pour a second mold. I was able to get at least two molds out of that single trial kit. So the procedure that we did for the first mold is getting repeated. Now the casting material we're using is the SmoothCast 65D. This is a one-to-one -one, uh, mix ratio by volume. So no gram scale is necessary. We can just dispense equal amounts.
and it has a work time of two and a half minutes with a full cure of 10 to 15 minutes. Now that's under normal conditions at room temperature. For this part, we're using relatively little material and we will let it cure for at least 40 minutes at room temperature. But more importantly, this is a semi-rigid product that's going to withstand the constant bending, twisting, and dropping of these frames. But uh, as always, you want to pre-mix the materials separately before starting to mix them. And you can see that uh, bright green label on the side, it will indicate to pre-mix the material. Now, my dispensing cups are marked at the same level, and we can go ahead and dispense the part A and part B. The two parts are combined in a clean mixing container and then mix thoroughly. Now, even though I am uh, using a small container and not a lot of material, I'm going to double mix my material even more so because I'm mixing a smaller quantity. I want to ensure that the two components are thoroughly mixed together. The smooth cast is now poured into our mold opening. Fairly simple, straightforward here with pouring the material from the top. And then we're going to use a squeegee tool or a scraper tool to level um, any of the material up top and kind of uh, push it into any crevices. Any of the axes is simply uh, scraped away. The product is now allowed to fully cure. Liquid plastics such as the Smoothcast 65D are mass sensitive. What that means is that the more material you have, the faster it will set up. And since this is a very small part, this is a thin part, um, it's going to take longer for that mass to heat up. So we're going to let this cure for 40 minutes at room temperature of 73 Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that a little bit of extra heat will shorten that cure time quite a bit. Now the frames have fully cured and are demolded and as you can see it's really easy to pop these out and because we did a scrape technique uh, when we pour the material there isn't uh, any uh, flashing left to clean really on these so they're ready to be put to use basically. And here you can see that the material is fully cured and is quite flexible and ready to be used. To finish our project, we're going to add one more step, and that's the addition of the Silpoxy adhesive. This is a silicone adhesive to the rim that's going to be meeting the forehead of the person wearing this shield. Now, this product has a work time of five minutes and a full cure of 12 minutes, so it's extremely fast. But more importantly, once the material is cured, it's actually skin safe. Not so in the liquid state, so make sure you wear gloves when you're applying this product. And we're going to put it on the visor where it actually meets the forehead. So we're going to set this up, and then we're going to uh, puncture this new tube, and then we're going to apply some of that Silpoxy adhesive onto that rim, again, where it's going to meet the forehead of the person wearing it. I'm going to just squeeze out some of the silicone adhesive, and then we're going to use a uh, tongue depressor here, a small mixing stick to just level that out a little bit so it has a nice and clean level so it's not all lumpy. This is now allowed 12 minutes to cure before being put to use. Now to the visor itself, this is a clear sheet of plastic. You can get these in many sizes. This one is from a overhead projector and I'm simply going to punch three holes with our hole puncher because the frame itself is designed to fit that uh, um, layout. And then we're gonna take a piece of rubber band and we're gonna punch some holes at the ends here too. And then the entire frame can get assembled. So here goes our rubber band in the back to hold the shield on the head itself. And then we can simply put that plastic shield onto the frame. And these are really easy to put on and take off. So you can actually replace them quite easily and quite fast. And just to test it, I'm gonna 
put this on with a mask to see how this actually fits together. And as you can see, it protects my face from direct uh, um, exposure and will be easy to replace and inexpensive to manufacture. Now, each casting we made using the 65D was 20 grams of material. And if we take a gallon unit of the SmoothCast 65D, which contains 15.40 pounds of material, we were actually able to make about 345 uh, pieces out of that material. Silpoxy, which uh, adds another 10 cents and the cost, which brings approximately uh, the price per unit to 40 cents, which is quite incredible if you think uh, how many castings we were able to get out of this gallon unit. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you'd like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step procedure on how you can make these face shield frames in a very, very fast, timely manner. Now, remember, we went from a 3D print to a mold within 30 minutes, and then used that mold to create the first castings within an hour. After that, we went back, made some more molds, so we can create many, many castings within a very short period of time. Now, remember, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.